So transfer electron affinity. Electron affinity measure the change in energy that occurs when an electron is added to the outer energy level of an atom to form a negative ion. So if energy is released when an atom gains an electron, the electron affinity would be shown as a negative number. Metals have a low electron affinity. Why? Because if we break down what affinity means, it means wanting, right? Or, or even liking. So metals do not like, do not care for their valence electron. They're more likely to want to give it up because they don't have a strong enough pull with the nucleus on that valence electron. So they're more likely to want to get rid of it also because the energy level the, that's next in line, right? The outermost energy level that has the one valence electron of let's say something like lithium, it's more likely to want to get rid of it because its inner energy level is already at its stable octet. Okay. So metals have a low electron affinity, non-metals have a greater affinity. They want the electrons because remember, metals lose their electrons and who do they lose them to? Non-metals, because non-metals gain electrons. So, electron affinity tends to decrease down a group. Fluorine most reactive and has the highest electron affinity. Okay? It only needs, it requires one electron. It really wants that electron badly because it is so close to reaching its stable octet form. So electron affinity tends to increase across a period. Well, calcium has a lower electron affinity than sulfur. Why? Because calcium has two valence electrons. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Calcium does not have a strong affinity because it wants to get rid of those two electrons. Sulfur has a stronger electron affinity because it wants to pick up those two electrons to become stable. So that's why sulfur will have a stronger or a, or a more increased electron affinity than calcium, right? Metal, less affinity for the electron. Sulfur, non-metal, greater affinity for that electron.